Hello, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to the Friday evening Reef Dog live stream. It feels weird, doesn't it? Really weird, really, really weird. And actually, uh, I'm laughing because I was uh, just panicking and trying to click a load of stuff off, and I was over the other side of the room with about four seconds before the countdown ended. Um, the first thing to say before anything else, we have Whale Shark Man in the house. Is that Whale Shark Man? It is Whale Shark. We've missed you. You were, you were in the last couple. He was here last week, I think. I did oh. see him, but I only I only saw him when I watched it back. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so, Whale Shark Man, good evening, welcome. Uh, yeah. So, this is first off. This is going to be a Q and A session, basically, and we're just going to we're just going to have a chat. I just wanted to have I wanted to do a live stream Sunday, of course. Normal live stream is is Christmas Day, yeah. and I was like, let's do a live stream, and uh, and Ryan was available. So, uh, and yes, sir. There we go. We got the uh, old uh, whale, 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 uh, whale Shark guy. Peter, so, if you got, oh, oh, Peter Coleman's one of my customers. It's his first time. I know he, li he usually listens to them later. This is the first time we've actually been here live. Excellent. But yeah, so hello, <laughs> hello, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> hello there. Um, so yeah, basically, it's going to be a a, a Q and A session. So any questions you've got, uh, chuck them in the uh, the comments, and we'll have a chat. Uh, and we're just going to just chat about fish. I just like talking about fish. Who doesn't like talking about fish? So basically, neither of us has done any homework today. So we're expecting you to give us the content to talk about. Is what he's saying? I think. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> so. Otherwise, we're just going to be sat here in silence, like, mm, True. So. But firstly, I'm going to address the elephant in the room, Ryan. Yeah, go for it. Where, where's your art? Where's my art? This is this uh, is obviously, well, I think you can tell all the Christmas stuff. This is not my house. Um, and those of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen that it is minus 13 outside because I posted a picture of me uh, with a frozen beard. <laughs> um, I am currently in America. So I'm, I, so you know, you know, on the news where you see a a snowstorm is hitting America, that is exactly where I am. So um, yeah, I'm currently in Michigan, which is basically the middle of nowhere, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you're and you're like on the border of Canada, basically. Right? I think yeah, I don't think Canada is that far away. I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't think it's that far away. But yes, no, it's, I, had, I had a look on a map. <clears throat> But, but this, this, is, this is the the funny thing. So because like as a, as a Brit, like you said, you were going to Michigan, yeah. And I was like, I've got literally no idea where that is. It yeah. could have been. I knew it wasn't in New York. Yeah. And I knew it wasn't in Vegas. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere else, it could have been. So it's like, yeah. And then I I think you're about right. I know where New York and Vegas and Florida is, but that's about it for me too. <laughs> Exactly right, but and even actually, so I realised the other day when uh, what was the, what's the um, the guy with the massive tank, a rich guy in America in uh, Polo's Reef. Uh, yeah, yeah, Polo's Reef. So when he was on, I said uh, at some point at the start of the stream, I was like, "Oh, you're in Florida, right?" And he was like, "No, I'm in New York. No, I'm not. I'm not ready for Florida yet." And I was like, "I don't know what that means." And I realised afterwards that it's because if you're if you're in Florida, it means you're retired and old. So yeah. he 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 thought I was calling him old, basically, but that's. That's not what I meant. I just didn't know. <laughs> but anyway. okay, for all the people that are missing missing the uh, the artwork, is that is that good enough for you? No, we we're going to need to see some uh, some more graphic drawings. Uh, okay, one second. Let me see. I feel like also it... looks that's a pencil man, by the way. <laughs> that's so, getting a bit concerned. Yeah. Um. So, oh, and there's the first uh, first question, Ryan. Yeah. Is that you draw a sexy whale shark? <laughs> so, uh, I ca I cannot draw a sexy whale shark. So I wouldn't be able to like I, I wouldn't be able to do them justice. All right, first actual question. This is a really good one. If you were to start, if you were to start from scratch, what would you change about your system? So he says, Mister Dork. But I'm going to ask you first, Ryan. What would you change about your? In fact, you're about to set up a um a, a new tank or soon yeah. anyway. Correct. So, what are you changing from your last or, or from from what you've learned basically? <laughs> okay, the I can start with the coral farm. That's actually easier than than the the tank. The first the mm -hmm. thing I would change about the coral farm one hundred percent, and I wish I could do it now, but it's too late. Is I would make all the stands metal rather than wood. Uh, the wood does bow slightly. It's not. It isn't. It's not getting any worse, but it just it, it plays on my mind because you know when you sit you see it every day, you're like, oh, there's a slight bow in that. <laughs> it's just. And you just think, and it has been reinforced, but I would just rather it was metal. That's that's the number one thing I would do. Um, I'm I'm also wouldn't necessarily this wouldn't help most people. I'm not sure I'd go for glass again. I might use I might go for really glass. acrylic. If I if I take glass out of it and use and use trays, 
like um uh, i can't remember what it's called yeah 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 you, you cut out then whatever. i don't know what you said then but you said something like trust yes yes like, uh, aci aquaculture Yes, yeah. If I did that, then it would save so much maintenance because I wouldn't have to do any. Um, I wouldn't have to do any glass cleaning. So, um, tidal gardens, though, they said that they like that he hated troughs because you just couldn't see. Yeah, down. That's it. So it's it sort of swings and roundabouts. With regards to the tank, and this is going to surprise some people, um, I will not have an aquarium controller probably on uh, on on my main new tank in the house uh, because. I, you know, I realized that most of the time you use them to control your heater. <laughs> so you pay 800 pounds for, for an aquarium controller and most of it just controls your heater because everything else is controlled through an app. If you think your lights and your power heads and um, you can even get, I, look, it does control my dosing pumps as well. But a lot of people ask me if it's essential and I don't think it is essential. Do you have an aquarium controller? Uh, I've got um, a few refactory things that, so not one central controller, but a yes. few things, that, but not really. So nothing like an Apex? No, no, no. See, all the time during the consultations, people say to me, what controller do I need? Do I, like, I, I, I'm going to get an Apex, or I'm going to get something. And the reality is, especially if you're new at this, you've now got two people here that I never used to have one on my tank, and you don't have one on yours, do you? So No, and I, so I've, I've made videos before where I've said they're just like listed kit that you do need and you don't need, basically. Yeah. And that is firmly firmly in the don't need heating yeah. controller absolutely that because particularly with a the fan they're just really good yeah but beyond that and i i wouldn't if i was setting up a new tank today i wouldn't get a an apex or a, a ghl yeah just it's, it's over complicated and as much as anything so we'd like i didn't get on with my ghl just didn't yeah. like the software um so it's just not for me um and the uh, the apex stuff it's the sort of thing that I think if if I had one, I'm sure I'd love it because everyone is always like says the same thing. Yeah. But you've got to learn all of the uh, all of the the code and all that lot. And when you watch videos about it, and uh, and people are like saying, "Oh yeah, I've just set up a program," so it says, "Oh yeah, set uh, set this," uh, and then if this does this, then that does this. And I'm like, man, that's just I can't face the prospect of sitting down with an instruction manual and learning all that yeah it's exactly the same as having an expensive shower uh, 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 i just said shower <laughs> it's because someone just turned the shower on I'm having a golden shower yeah if someone just turned the shower on it's exactly the same as having an expensive camera um if you don't know how to use it properly what's the point in having an expensive camera that's, that's the best analogy i can think of towards it very true yeah but no, I, I wouldn't have either. The, the, some of the, the things. Sorry, carry on. What what else would uh, would you do? Uh, so I wouldn't have that. Uh, I will have. Uh, I've never had a tank with a, had a net on it before because I didn't need it. Uh, but with it in, I, obviously the coral farm has them now, and this one will have them. Um, Try to think. I having the rockscape forward enough so that you can clean the back is a, is essential as far as I'm concerned. I don't. Do you clean? You must clean your back glass. Uh, I, so there's a patch I can't reach. So my arm will stretch about three foot, but the last foot I can't reach. So yeah. So there's there's some planning. I would like to also change the aquascape and do have a more minimalistic one. Always I've just gone pile of rocks, and I, I yeah, yeah. just a pile. It, I've done sort of things with them to have a very very minimalistic one would be interesting. I think to um, to escape that minimalistic to a point though, because you've got to have uh, and uh, you've got to have some height so the, the most important thing apart from uh places to plant corals is hiding places for fish yeah 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 that's true um so i think it's minimalist to a point but I, so i i re i bought a um a man-made aquascape recently yeah um, how sorry how, how is that only because I, I i'm thinking about getting something similar to that basically yeah so it's fine it's really good i i didn't have I, that's the third, fourth or fifth piece i've had from them yeah. Well, I've had quite a few, most of them quite small. And this is from RR Aquascapes in the UK. I bought it, no sponsorship, not no affiliate. I'm no, not linked with them. Um, but I've got on with it fine. So lots of people said, oh, it's going to leach and all this. And when I first contacted them, when I first got one, I was like, do I have to soak it? Is it going to leach phosphate, metals, whatever? Yeah. And he's like, no, just chuck it straight in. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that. But this has been absolutely fine. If, if it has leached anything, it might have done. I don't know. But I haven't noticed. There's been no spike on ICPs or whatever. Yeah. So it's fine. I found it's that when I had a, a Dino's outbreak ages ago, 
um the i had one piece of uh, of that that was relatively new and that got covered in like this brown fluff yeah. was, the dinos didn't spread to any of my other rocks so that must be because that there was bacteria settled there that could outcompete the dino. I don't know, but so so but that even that burnt off after a while uh, when I fixed the dinos. So it's been fine. I've got I've had no problems with it. I, the only thing I'd say is this is this has all gone into or most of it actually this uh, in there. There's that's a, an RR aquascape thing as well. Yeah. But most of them have gone into an established tank. Yes. Yeah. So I've really I've good. always found that. Man, I know everyone uses man-made rock these days. I just don't like them that much over a period of time. I don't know what it is. I know some of them definitely leach some stuff. Definitely, I couldn't tell you which ones. I, I don't. I, I know of customers of mine that have actually done ICP tests, gone to the manufacturer, got and said, "Look, there is nothing in this tank, but you're rock and water." And then the manufacturer went, "Okay, we'll fix this for you." So I know. I know that that definitely does happen. Um, but and as I said, I don't want to mention who they are or anything because as I'm saying, it, might, it might have fixed it. <laughs> um, but it's that that would be a concern for me. I like I, I like to go. I think I'd like to start with at least some live rock again. Um, I would put, yeah. I'd put it in my sump. Uh, I don't. You must have seen the BRS um, program about yeah, 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 yeah. cycling a tank. And if you put it in the sump, then all the all the photosynthetic things can't explode because there's no light in there. But you still get the beneficial bacteria. That's probably what I would do this time, which I wouldn't normally do. Yeah, I always have one piece of live rock or a couple of pieces, ideally. Um, but I'm fine with having a, a man-made rock. And I, so my main tank is real reef rock. Yeah, there was a bit of live rock that I carried over from my previous tank. Yeah, uh, and a few bits of new live rock, new new live rock I bought from a shop and put in my sump. Uh, but the rest of it was all man-made real reef, and I've got no problem with that. I would, I would, if I was starting again, I would definitely have some live rock, but I would have almost exclusively man-made because it just it, like the 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 one I've got has got all those little frag plug holes in it now. Yeah, yeah. It just makes it so easy. It looks, when you... it looks ugly. Do you think it looks ugly? Well, it looks ugly for for a month when you haven't got any corals in. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, it's like I don't, I don't, I never look at the tank and go, "Oh, I've got holes in it." Ever. It's like, and like with my wallpaper. I know everyone takes a piss out of my wallpaper. It's purple, but and, so, and so they should. So they should quite right. I never see it. So every now and then I'll get a comment and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I forgot." So when I look at my tank, I never, I don't even notice it. Yeah. With, with, very close depth of vision, basically. <laughs> yeah. You only see the inside the glass. Yeah, exactly. I've got funny eyes. But so, but like, so the the holes in the frag plugs in the um in the rock don't bother me at all. I ne I never see them, and it just for 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 putting corals in place for a start. If you've ever well, you obviously you have done. You try to put a coral in place if it's on a normal rock with no holes in it. Yeah, you have to find you, super gluing a, a, a frag plug to a rock. Uh, underwater is for me it's just impossible it never works yeah, yeah. So you you have to do that and if you're lucky put a load on and then smush it on maybe and if you yeah. hold it in place maybe or you have to putty it on and that's difficult as well and it's just always a faff whereas with this frag plug pop in done and then if i decide a month later i don't want it there i want it somewhere else pop move it off and done do, can the fish pull them out or the plugs of the holes no no Oh, that's interesting. The, the the urchins probably the urchin probably can. Yeah. But they, they never they have never have done so far, a few months in. Yeah. What would you <coughs> do them then? Because you've asked me, what would you do? Excuse me. Um so this is gonna be a really boring thing, but this is the first thing that came to mind when I saw that question was cable management. Yeah, boring. Well <laughs> it's it's Almost like a metal stand. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, exactly. But it's realistically, there are lots of things I would do differently with um, with the tank and the corals and all that lot, which I'll come on to. But the first thing is I would spend ages because when you buy a new tank, everyone must be the same as this. You're like, I've got all this equipment. I've got the tank. I need to get water in. I need to put the skimmer on. And like you just say, so you just go, ah, chuck it in, pump, return pump. And just it just is a mess. Whereas what I would do this time is it's like, I'm going to have this tank for five years. Yeah. So if I started today or next week, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Or next month. So I would really take my time planning where all the equipment's going to go, set up the plugs in the right space so it's not messy, get the, the cables the right length, and I would spend probably a week 
sorting out the the logistics of the cables because when you don't <laughs> sorry how many cables have you got if it's going to take you a week i've got about 32 plugs yep. in my 30 28 30 something like that even the car farmer has like 70 so what are you running <laughs> So it was stupid things like I've got how many lights have I got? I've got four, five, six lights. Yeah. <laughs> I've got four power heads and two return pumps. No, so you have got so that's, that's 12, 12 just on that. Yeah, yeah. But then but the thing is when if you don't sort your cable management out, when I have to go, if I need to unplug um something, if I need to move it around or if I change a piece of equipment or clean a piece of equipment. The cables are all wrapped around each other. You can't yeah, see which yeah. one's which. Like I've labeled the plugs, but even then, sometimes I'll swap a plug out and I don't relabel it. So yeah. it's just so that that's a really boring thing to say, but that is the first thing that came to mind, and that's the the biggest thing I think. Yeah, it's um. The, see, the car farm was done very well. The cable management and it's all perfect and it's amazing until you have to replace something, <laughs> and then you yeah, have to yeah, pull it all out. It's all in trunking and everything, but the, all the cables are in the trunk together. And you have to pull them all out. Oh, so I've got um, yeah. There's uh, there's some things which I which I need to replace, and I've just left the old ones in there because it's too much hassle to take yeah. them. Out. <laughs> but that's that's what I'm talking about is when you need to do that sort of thing. So I would make that really easy. Yeah. And it's not actually my I, uh, my cables aren't that bad. Um, if you look back at old videos, some of them bloody hell, it was a mess. But at the moment, I've had a bit of a tidy sesh recently. Yeah. But I, what I plan on doing at some point is having a day where I just sit down, unplug everything, move it all around, and replug and get it set up again. But yeah. Um, but in terms of actually the tank, sorry. No, I was just going to say, practical reefer has, has just made a comment. It says both Ryan's audio and background art, 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 background art quality has dropped. I don't have my microphone with me. It's too heavy to bring here. Yeah. Although what is interesting is I did bring my microphone, uh, my other microphone that we're going to do for YouTube videos. And when it went through the scanner at the airport, they thought it was a pipe bomb. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I had, they had people there and then all of a sudden it was just one person. Then there were two. In America. No, no, here. It was in a Heathrow really? airport. Yeah, there were like three, then there were like three people. All of a sudden there was like 10 people all around this screen looking at, looking at my suitcase. And I'm like, why is my bag not come yeah. off? <laughs> looking at it. And the other thing, they, they test your bags for explosives and something in sun cream sets off the explosive. Um, re like there's some ingredient in sun cream which sets it off. So you get a false reading. <laughs> so <laughs> well, That's interesting. They, sorry. As I say, the man showed me the screen, turned it around and went, what is this? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, now I understand. Because it's just yeah, a long metal yeah. pipe. <laughs> Oh right, okay. You're different, right? I see. Yeah. All right, open it up and have a look. <laughs> yeah, you, don't, you open the suitcase for I'm like, yeah, fine, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wearing, I can explode like a, a bomb suit, so they couldn't have been that wide, could they? No. Oh, but but it's, so it's funny, my missus goes through every time, literally every time my missus goes through a, a, an airport scanner, every yeah. single time she gets pulled to one side and they ask her, so maybe it's maybe she's got sun cream in, I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> um they yeah, so that... did set it off. That's how I know the sun cream thing. So yeah, okay. that's funny. <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, microphone. Well, whatever. It's just, it is what it is. That's yeah. Um, but in terms of the, the, the actual tank itself, I <coughs> uh, the only the only real major thing I do differently is Monty. So they're just encrusted on everything, and I would isolate. I, I wouldn't not have Monty's necessarily, but I yeah. would if I did. I'd isolate them on an island so they can't spread. Yeah. Um, apart from that, I'd have a man-made scape that, from RR Aquascapes. They're just brilliant. Um, and what else would I do? Fish. Mostly, most of my fish would be the same. Um, I don't think I'd make many changes to fish. I think I'd possibly go for a couple of um, tangs, maybe. But I think when yeah. you've been doing it as long as us, all the things that you <laughs> wanted to try generally you've tried and realized that it was a bad idea <laughs> and then kept going if you, if you see what i mean so there's true definitely things that i wanted to try before and i did like even getting the achilles tang that was a terrible idea achilles tangs are not good fish to have they're they're expensive they cause loads of problems and they also usually have parasites of some sort so yeah. and you can quarantine them and things like that but they are just a pain in the ass they find a way yeah they look cool though <laughs> it's cool. yes yes but it causes you trouble forever basically yeah um the other thing actually we're starting a system from scratch so my i have three tanks of course the one behind me 
the water, the uh, the main tank, the Red City four foot tank, and then I've got a little water box two foot tank by my side now. And that tank was set up as a frag tank to house frags for my main tank. Yeah. But it's never really flourished. Like Monty's and Zoas and LPS do really good. Yeah. But my acros have never really taken off. There's some in there now. They're okay. They're surviving. They've got some color, but they just don't really thrive. So because it isn't, and it's been over a year now, because it's not working, I'm going to abandon the idea of having that as a, a frag tank and I'm going to turn it into an LPS tank. Okay. And I'm going to try to make it like a, a really spectacular LPS tank. So, for, but all I'm going to, I'm going to make a video about it. But all I'm really going to do with that is rip out the scape, put in an RR Aquascape scape. Yeah. I'm not going to change any equipment, uh, same lights, same parrots, all that stuff. And I'm just going to focus on corals, nice corals and nice and coral placement. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a shallow tank as well, isn't it? So it'll be interesting. Yeah. It's 16 I inches tall. Tanks when they're, when they're, I like shower tanks when they're properly aquascaped because um, they're quite unusual to look at. Mm. I, the, the, I think they've discontinued the, the Waterbox Frag series now. But I, I, I would, a five foot uh, frag tank, as in red Waterbox frag tank that's 16 inches tall. Yeah. Oh, that would look so cool. But yeah. <clears throat> Um, anyway, so that's the, uh, the, the first question, which we spent an hour on. <laughs> Second question, Asterina stars, yes or no? I know no. what Ryan's going to say. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. Say yes. <clears throat> say yes, because Alex likes to spread them around his systems for some reason and my systems. <laughs> but like when I say yes, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever advise someone to do that. But I, if, if someone said, I really want to do it, shall I? I'd, I'd be like, you can no problem with it uh, yeah. but there, the thing is there are enough people out there who have stories of them eating whatever corals there is in particular that there's something to it <clears throat> so oh, yeah. it's not like it's not like people are making it up there's definitely something to it it's just in my experience the asterines i've got whether there are different types god knows the asterines i've got in my system don't eat corals they, they behave yeah. maybe it's because the the tank's well fed i don't know so. Yeah, they're not they're not one of the worst pests. Let's put it that way. So I'm not. I obviously have a few of them. You have about a few million of them. Uh, I'm I'm not concerned uh, because they just they're just there, and you just pick them off if you need to. That, that's really easy to get off. And when I sell frags, I, I there's always one on a frag plug, but you just you look and then you flick it off. That's it. It's so easy to get. And if you put them in a dip, they're not surviving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, they're really good for that. Um, ooh, Shamila Butters. What camera and lens would you recommend for coral picks? And what lens would you recommend for phone camera picks? Ryan, what lens? Well, I don't have a fancy camera, so you'll have to answer that question because I'm not smart enough to use one. Uh, and I use uh, a, I, I use a, the problem is D&D don't make the coral lens anymore, but they used to. D&D used to do a coral lens that had yellow and orange and a magnifying glass. Uh, they now make a new one, and the new one doesn't work for what I need it for, which I showed you, didn't I, once, where it showed, it feel, if I film with Reflex, it, yeah. Reflects. <clears throat> I don't know if the same thing happens if you take pictures with it. You might know that. I don't know. It does. You can still you can still use the new lens on the yeah. old body so it doesn't reflect it. Yes. There is, you can't there is a company new. which called Mantis who make the, uh, the exactly the same lenses but with a different name on them. And they're the old style ones. Have you got a Mantis one? Is that what you're showing me? No, I've got. I just got a generic one off eBay. Yeah. Don't even know what it says, but th this is really good. And this has got the uh, the cover that stops it um, reflecting. reflecting. Yeah. I was so disappointed when I when I bought the new one and found that it didn't have that sort of black bit in there. It's a shame because apart from that, the orange is a better tint of orange than the old one. I find yeah. it, it makes the color look better. But you're right that it does reflects you can see the out, outer ring of the camera it's like yes yeah so kind of it's what's the point taking a picture if you can see you see reflections of other things back in it yeah so. but basically the, the the dd one is one i go for but the orphec one gets a lot of love the orange lens but in terms of cameras yeah. the most important thing is is knowing how to use a camera so yeah. i did a i did an evening class at my local college um that was like 10 weeks long in how to use it so you learn about aperture you learn about shutter speed yeah. uh, iso it, just framing just everything you learn and if you don't bother with that you might as well not bother you can spend 10 grand on a camera and your photos will be average yeah, yeah with that being said if you want a recommendation i've not used many cameras i use a fuji xt4 fuji xt4 
Uh, this lens is just incredible. It's a 16 millimeter 1.4. It's fantastic. And it's got a Tiffin 85, 85B orange filter. And uh, that just, that, oh man, it's, it's a short uh, focal length, but it's just such an awesome lens. Um, so, I'm assuming it's not cheap for a camera like that. That was uh, probably about 1500 quid for the camera, and the what? lens was 700 quid. Yeah. Oh, that is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's obviously with me, it's worth it because I use it for, for yeah. videos. And I've got another Fuji, yeah. the camera recording me is another Fuji one as well. It's a different Fuji, but and yeah. Fuji are really good. The color, color reprodu rep reproduction is very good. But ask someone who's got more experience with better cameras, to be honest. Um, I like the look of the new Red Sea skimmer, Ryan. I know you like talking about kit. Yes, you saw that from the last live stream we did. So, I, what whilst I, you guys fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the the I was I was saying to, this to earlier. If I had before when I had my old NIOS skimmer, yeah. it used to overflow all the time. If you fed coral food, if you changed your, your your fish food, if you looked at it wrong, it would overflow, and it drove or you washed it, it would it drove me crazy. I hated it, and so at that point, I I got rid of it. But yeah. now the one I have at the moment is a Dell Tech, and it yeah. never ever overflows. So actually, the overflow feature, the self leveling thing. Yeah. won't necessarily benefit me but if i'd have had that previous skimmer and loads of skimmers overflow for no reason yeah so if you've got that then the red sea uh, yeah. one is wicked but i really like the the pause button so it's feed mode and it turns off your skimmer your return pump and your gyres that yeah. i love because at the moment i have to press one two three four buttons to turn off all my pumps and it's like ah oh. and it turns it back on gradually so it'll turn on the return pump first and then the skimmer when your sump level has dropped yeah, yeah. And then when your water level in tank has, has raised, uh, it'll turn your gyres on. Anyway, we'll we'll move on because I know you, that just that sort that sort of thing gets my motor running. <laughs> it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a hard sorry. life having to press four buttons, isn't it? it it's a pain in it. Well, it's, it's a <laughs> minor minor issue. But. I never ever use feed mode for anything. Never ever ever. I have even, so even when you want to look at take photos of the corals to turn the flow off. No, I just turn the MP40s off with those buttons. Yeah. Okay. Because they're, well, basically... they're above the tank, so they're easy, easy access. So let's just press the button, don't I? The reason, so this is I, because I've got such a bad memory. The reason that's good for me is because if you press a feed button, it will come back on. So if you press a feed button, and yeah. then the, yeah. someone knocks on the door, you forget it'll come back on in ten minutes. Whereas if you turn your pumps off, you walk away and you forget they don't come back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, I, I just like that. It's not. It's not. This is not groundbreaking tech, <laughs> but I, I like that. Uh, so one needs a um, an RO unit which automatically turns off. I know you can get like a, uh, a, a float switch or float valve, but one of the biggest things that people do is flood their kitchen with with, um, with RO, RO units. And if you're if you're if you haven't got it properly plumbed into a barrel where you can have a float switch, there needs to be a way where it can automatically turn off. I still to this day still flood my kitchen. Yeah. Not not massively and uh, and not often, but off, more often than it should. Every a few times a year, yeah. Because uh, I, I, you forget, and that I don't have a barrel. I don't have a single barrel. I fill up either a, an auto water changer, which I can't put a float valve in permanently, or I fill up a little a barrel, which I can't put a float valve in permanently. Yes. I do have the the, the um, infrared water level sensor, so I I put that in. But that requires you to remember to do that. <laughs> and then it, it, when it when it does it shuts off my ro completely yeah so if but if i forget to do that or if i just think uh, it's, i'm only filling up 10 liters it'll be five minutes it's not a problem and then i walk away and i forget because i set myself a timer yeah and i recently bought myself a water detector but it turns out that needs um something in the water so it need, it can't be purified water oh, really? it, be, it does it detects the, the, the solids or something so yeah, yeah. Oh, god it's so frustrating so on the, on the farm, that's one of the best things that we did. I could literally turn it on, and a week later, if I've forgotten about it, it still won't flood. So it's got a float valve on it, and it also has a um, – if that fails, it has a drain. So it wouldn't, it can't happen. That's that's what I recommend. If you're going to plumb something in, do it properly. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, yeah, that's I find that really annoying. Um, I did see this. I have a small farm in Italy, coral farm, presumably. Maybe I enjoy your video all, all the weekend. Nice SPS, keep going, bro. Search coral frags. I have amazing rare SPS. Oh, I thought you were going to be asking a question about an advert. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that's an advert for his coral farm. It is. Yeah, I thought he was going to be asking a question about coral farms. But Sphinx, if you're in Italy, check out 
uh, coral frags. There you go. That was that was that was a sneaky way to get it, get some advertising from two <laughs> from two YouTubers. And I now qualify for ten percent of all sales because that's what that's I get. Do you not, do not not know our terms and conditions for yeah. advertising. It's, I get ten percent of all Red Sea sales as well. Yeah, so I've done a video about this. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> I actually looked up their accounts once. Uh, pub it's public information. It's probably a uh, lot, I assume. Uh, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong; it makes money, but it's not it's not as big a company as you think. And that show that talks about the size tells you about the size of the hobby. Hobby's yeah. not big, is it? No, yeah, it's not huge. It's not like anyway, whatever. Uh, oh yeah, this was about the the Neptune Apex. I can guarantee when you get one, you'll do a video telling everyone how great it is, and you wish you'd got one years ago. See, this is the thing: loads of people say that. You get an Apex or a GHL, and they're like, "I can't believe I, I how did I ever live without it?" But I just don't see it. And I'm no. sure that I'm sure that's right, but it's like I don't want that extra layer of of because like going in checking on my app for what the temperature is and what the alk is, wicked. But going in and all these different programs that you've got to set everything up with, if it does this, then do that, and then test it to make sure. Oh God, I can't be asked. <laughs> yeah, because the other thing, although they do they uh, they have uh, probes on them, don't they? But the probes only work if you, if you calibrate them, and after a while you just stop calibrating them, and then yeah, that's yeah, that's then you might as well not have them. So yeah. I do like the the energy monitoring. I think is cool on the on the apex because that because it's it tells you when. And I know you never clean your pumps because you're a disgrace. True, I am a disgrace. It's, it tells you things like so if your if your pumps need cleaning, they they're drawing less power. Yeah. But more to the point, if your return pump dies, it'll tell you, and I like that. That's, yeah, cool. that's true. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is true. I agree with that. But the rest of it, I'm not really bothered about. And all like you're right, probes are a pain in the ass because you, if you don't calibrate them, there's no point in having them. And I can't be bothered to calibrate them. It's not just calibrating; it's also cleaning them because they get they yeah. put in an area like in the sump where there's all this algae and crud collects, and they get all crud on them. And they, and they're not yeah. the easiest things to clean probes because they they you have to get inside them usually to be able to clean them properly. You can get little cleaning fluids, can't you? But um I'm not worried because I don't clean stuff anyway, so <laughs> no, <laughs> indeed. Anyway, next question. Ian Stafford for nutrient export. Uh can you downsize the equipment, skimmer and molar mat, if having both uh and also a fuge to prevent nutrients bottoming out? Yeah, this is the one thing with um uh with uh, so I did a video on my Reef Talk Extra channel. Oh, did you know I've got a second channel? Subscribe now. I'm not subscribed either. To I know them. you're not. You, you, <laughs> yeah, because you you hate me. But um, so and I've done a video on that, and it's a 150 liter tank, and I've got a skimmer and a, a, a filter roller, and I don't feed an awful lot of um of food, uh, so I've got to be careful with that. Nutrients don't bottom out on mine, but if you've got, and this is the one thing with when I first set up my main tank, I didn't put a filter roller in from day one because I didn't want it. You don't need on a brand new tank. You don't need a skimmer or a fugium of uh, roller mat, all this. You don't need it. It'll yeah. be harmful for you. But the trouble with that is when I did eventually need it, installing a, a, yeah. a filter roller in a, a wet tank is a pain in the, oh my God. It was, it, it just takes a bit of patience, like with all these things, but God, it was, I, I resorted to smashing glass panels with a, with a spanner. Um, <laughs> But, but you've, you've got to be careful with that because it, it's, it's easy to look at. If you look at videos on what equipment you need, it's really easy to say skimmers. Obviously, I need a skimmer, and I think most people would say that. Yeah. But it's also easy to say you might watch a review of might watch my review of the reef man and be like, I need that. But it's like, well, actually, do you? Especially if you've got a few a refugium as well. Yeah. How many fish have you got in there? It's like, so yeah, absolutely, you've got to be careful about bottoming stuff out and take stuff. But if if that's happening, take stuff offline. Turn your filter roller off. Turn your skimmer off for half the day. Does it improve the clarity of your water significantly? So on this, the one I've installed it on now, the water box, yeah. I haven't noticed. But I don't really pay that much attention to the tank. And it's blue. It's blue now. It's blue most of the time. Yeah, yeah. But on my main tank downstairs, the difference was night and day. And that was the one. That was the one. So I bought this one on the one upstairs. I was yeah. given the, the other one for free. Yeah. But the oh my god, I, I went downstairs the day after I installed it, and I was like, did I change the carbon or something? Yeah. It was crystal clear. And I'd had a filter roller on there before for a year, two years, and it made a, an amazing difference. It's now not as clear as it was then. So it was like a bit of a bump for a few months, but still it's much clearer. And for water clarity, you I would pay any money 
to have clearer water. So for that alone, is wicked. But I've I've got quite a big tank full of fish, feed quite heavy ish, so I don't really have to worry about that. But even then, my nitrates are low. <laughs> yeah. So you should your phosphates are out of control. <laughs> have you started? Yeah, they're still... <laughs> uh, this I can't. So I'm using Nios Fuzzy X now. Okay. Which is yeah. Wicked. Yeah. But it's still it, and it's like it started to bump down to about 0.25, 0.20, and it's back up to 0.28. I tested the other day and I was like, what's going on? Yeah. So I'm just gonna, it's just going to be a, a, a process. But the thing is, I don't care. If it takes six months for me to get this right, fine. Yeah. I'm not going to do it in six days, tell you that much. So, uh, but yeah, it'll be a long process. Well, the reality is it doesn't matter. As long as you remember to keep doing it, as long as you remember and keep up with that routine, you don't want to do it quickly. <laughs> no, indeed. Um, but what I was going to say is, so uh, uh, next week, uh, I want to do, on for the live stream, I want to do a New Year's reefing res ref resolutions. Okay, yeah. Um, and I, I won't say what one of mine is. because Are you giving me my homework now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get thinking. <laughs> okay. okay. If anyone's got in the comment section wants to help me out, send me a private message. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I always cheat at homework, even at school. You cheated at homework, right? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, everyone does. Um, question for you, Ryan. Is it okay? Oh, nice scully, Ethan. Is it okay to keep a regal angel in a four foot 90 gallon? I've been wanting to, to add one for my eight fairy and flasher ass system with two clowns of gobi and a blenny. Too much protein skimmer, roll them out, phosphate reactor. PO4, PO3. What's a PO3? I think he means PO4. Anyway. Look, it's, that, it's not an overly big tank. It depends. Are you getting a full size regal angel, which is like a, a, a foot and a half? Or are you getting like a small cup, two inch regal angel? I assume you're going to start with a small one. Yeah. I, I'm not one of the people that says you shouldn't keep larger fish in small tanks when you start them off as babies I, I am of the opinion that people are adults and hopefully will do the right thing and if the fish gets too big you have to move it on or you have to get a bigger tank it's as simple as that and so i don't see any any harm with you putting that in that system uh fairy rasses are usually pretty uh they're not the most robust creatures are they usually as far as i know no, they're Mine will. I've had three that were very susceptible to bullying to the point that they got bullied to death. So yeah. I don't keep them anymore. But yeah. I don't think the regal angel. They're quite timid, aren't they? Yeah. Also, I don't think it would. I don't think they would care. They would just ignore them probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, if it was if it was a cream angel, I would say definitely don't because cream angels are a nightmare. They're cool though. <laughs> I had one once. Um, they, they, even though they're mostly just white with black, it's actually the pattern on the fish which which makes them stand out. Yeah. Okay. So I have a I have a regal engine in a four foot 105, 110 ish gallon tank. Yeah. And I I've I of course if he gets too big, they'll move him on, but I can't see that happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. So no. I would do it. And and yeah, yeah, that, yeah, and I don't think that's too many fish either. Eight. Yeah, that's I've I've probably got more fish than that to be fair. I've only got about 17 now. I used to have mid twenties. Um but anyway, I it's a reef and he, he's willing to take the risk. I have no idea how many. Yeah, if you if that skull is in that tank, where <laughs> you're putting the regal angel in, yeah, yeah. I might want to reconsider it. That's the thing. So I don't have scullies or a clam in my regal angel tank. I bought a clam and a regal angel fish on the same day once. <laughs> so I bought, oh, really? What, did, what did you buy that for the fish? <laughs> I put them in together, and it, it didn't touch the clam, to be fair. Uh, okay. I was, I'd always wanted a clam. I always wanted a regal angel, and it was a... It was a difficult time of my life where I was going through, uh, you know, I, I basically was just being reckless and I decided to just get them both on the same day <laughs> and see what happens. And it worked out temporarily. It, no, no, actually, it, it was actually completely fine. Um, the, uh, what was it, oh, but the regals do, or, or uh, lots of fish will pick at certain corals. So if you've got acans and if you've got scallies and even trackies, I would be concerned. But other than that, they're usually fine with most things. The only fish I've had that's had a problem with a, a clam is a cleaner ass. Oh, really? They peck at them. They're a right pain. Oh, so yeah. The clam just would never, it would open and then the cleaner ass comes over, pecks at the mantle, and yeah. the clam retracts. And it was like, oh, so. Um, anyway, there's your answer. You might get a camera <laughs> for another reefer in a minute. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Two, 250 FPV. Going to be upgrading tank soon from an all in one to water box frag. So, sump setup. Mm -hmm. What's your opinions of pros and cons of adding a UV steriliser on a manifold? What, what what are you doing it for? Is the first question. 
basically, should you use a UV on a, a new tank with a sump? Uh, I per first off, I wouldn't run it on a manifold. Okay. I uh, why wouldn't you run it on a manifold? Because the, the, the manifold he's talking about, I have a Waterfox frag tank, hello small child. <laughs> and the, the it goes off the um it, so the return pump goes up here, and then there's there's two little uh, uh valves over here. Yeah. So it would it would go straight into that, and that means then you want you want to be able to adjust the flow going through your UV yes, sterilizer, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you want it quite low. You've got a a, a tap a, a a ball valve. Yeah. But they're, they're not very precise, and also when anything, I just don't like the idea that of many things going. You can't control it. Basically, is what I'm. Okay. Is the issue I have. I I do think UV sterilizers are most useful actually at the, when you first have a new system, uh, because it keeps away bacterial blooms, but I don't I don't run UV sterilizers long term. I don't have it on any of the tanks I have. No, I I did on mine for a while. I got paranoid about um, when when my tank was established for a while. I got paranoid about introducing new fish and disease. Yeah. So I bought a fifty five watt UV, but I've since taken it down. I ran it for about a year. Yeah. Um, but I also it was it helped me with dinos as well. But um, I don't know. I, it, I I don't know if there's any real harm in running it all the time, but. I've never seen, never noticed a difference. That's the thing. You don't know if it's working. You don't know if it's doing anything, do you? That's, it's one of those things. It's like an insurance policy. It's like, you don't, if the wasp, is it doing anything? I don't know. Um, anyway, there's a question about flourish phosphate, phosphorus on a reef tank. Have you ever heard of flourish phosphorus? Of no. Sorry, Kerry. I can't help you there. Um, is it expected to lose one or two frags when you frag 25 to 50 frags out of your system? I think he's talking about you. Or maybe I think he maybe he's done this. Yeah. That's I think, are you saying are you saying you've made twenty five to fifty frags out of one colony, and and most of them are fine, but you lose a couple of them? Is that normal? Absolutely, that happens all the time. And, and sometimes I just wonder. You might be frag a Goniopora, and you've got I don't know thirty pieces, and it'll just randomly two of those pieces will, will will die, and you just think, well, what's different about those two pieces to all the other <laughs> to the other twenty eight of them? And sometimes they die six months later, and you just you just don't know. But it's uh, it's definitely something that yeah I wouldn't if if you if you have a ninety five percent success rate when it comes to fragging that's that's a good for a success rate as far as I'm concerned. You won't yeah. get hundred percent. There are times with Aquapora when I'll try to frag a colony and ninety percent of it will strip, and it, I'm talking like a big three year old yeah. colony, and it's just yeah. like oh man. That's I've so got crazy. I've got a um the Dragon Rider Montipora. It grows really well. You try and frag it, it'll just it just <laughs> for some reason you can frag ten pieces out of it and eight of them will die. And you just you don't know an iodine after as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I do I try and do everything properly to maximize the chance of, of doing it, but it's uh it's that specific Montepora just does not like being fragged. And I've used the saw and I've used bone cutters and you get the same effect with both of them. Yeah. Okay. Um all right, next question. Looking for a red reef safe fish. Wants a flame angel uh, so bad, yeah, don't we all? <laughs> but not willing to take the risk. I personally, I'd take the risk and get a fish trap, and if it goes rogue, catch it. I've got one in mind, Ryan. What red uh, fish would you get? Uh, you've got a scarlet hawk fish, haven't you? Bingo. That's that's the only thing that I can think of that would be a red fish other than the flame angel. That uh, you get some fairy wrasses which are red, but it's not that common of a yeah, color, is it? No, even there's a Jordan's wrasse which you can't get anymore from Hawaii. They are cool. They're red. If you want a red, like a proper red fish, then scarlet hawkfish is, is the one for you, because you don't get many fish that are more red than that. Than that. Scarlet hawkfish are the one for everyone. They're just ah, oh, they're so they're so characterful. They're wicked. I've, I've never had a hawkfish. Never, not any type. You're missing out. They're just uh, wicked. <laughs> the long nosed hawkfish seem cool, but I've never had. What uh, what do you say? The long nosed hawkfish. Got one of those as well. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got three hawkfish in my tank. They're wicked. They're wicked. And they're all fine together. All, all fine. The the falco. I've got a falco, a long nose, and a scar, and I've had them all for at least two years. I think I got the falco two years ago. The others three or four years. They all get on absolutely fine. The falco every now and then is a bit of a dig, but yeah. I'm I'm very sensitive to to aggression in my tank, and it doesn't bother me. So he's yeah. not that much of a dick. Like I put in a, a new rat the other day. And he chased the rash for a couple of days, but yeah. only every now and then. So that's as bad as it gets. So they're fine together. And actually, the the the, the scarlet and the the flame hawkfish sometimes hang out together, yeah. which is cool. All right. 
Have you ever seen the coral crouchers? Yeah, we talked about this a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. Day. I, okay, I have had one of those before, but they're not. I don't really consider them like hawkfish. I don't no, know. Well, you're not hawkfish, but I've got a um, what's it called? The checker board, checker, check. Oh, pygmy, geometric pygmy perchlet. Oh uh, yeah, I know those. Yeah, yeah, I've had one. It's of actually those. an anthias, but people, yeah. some people, some people call it. Uh, yeah, it's a grouper, I think technically. I didn't know that. Maybe, I might not be right. It's definitely, uh, but whatever it is, it's not. It's not a typical hawkfish. It's not a hawkfish, in fact, but it just looks like a hawkfish, and they're they're cool. But he's quite he's quite quiet. Um, I'm catching up on. Do you have a quarantine tank? Uh, I got a quarantine tank. I've never had a quarantine. Actually, that's not true. I did quarantine them a long time ago. Uh, I people. It, quarantine fish is, is like a big deal in america i think but not i would say it's much less common in england would you agree uh yeah i i hadn't no i hadn't thought about it being a big deal in america but yeah i guess so yeah it is it is definitely a much bigger a much more widely done thing over here than it is in england yeah okay i mean i, I don't either i've made a video about quarantining and I, which went down like a shit sandwich <laughs> with, some people, with some people to be fair yeah. I, stand, I, I stand by it I'm, I'm, it's, not, it's not one i regret making but i just i don't like quarantine I, I actually think that particularly for a beginner quarantine is really easy to get wrong it's easy yeah. it's not difficult in if you look on paper all you need is a tank some uh some a sponge from your main tank or whatever that's it but it's so easy to get wrong and i've lost so many fish to quarantine yeah and it was just like i just like you know what Sod it. So I, I personally don't quarantine and I don't recommend quarantine. But no, someone just said we do talk about it in the US, but I don't know anyone who actually does it. It's one of those things where everyone goes, Oh, you don't quarantine, and then you go, Well, do you know who does? And they're like, No. <laughs> so some people get really funny about quarantine. Like that was a, a sensitive topic. Yeah. And I got so people were pissed off. Yeah, uh, and like uh, people, some people saying they were disappointed me and all this, and it's like well, well, now I, they know how I feel about you most of the time. Exactly, it's so, but, but, but the point. So I'm. I, that video wasn't. You should not quarantine. Don't do it. It was like look, this is the other side of it. Yeah, this is what I do. And I, I, I'm not saying watch this video and then do it. All of my videos are watch this and then do your other research elsewhere and yeah. see what uh, see what makes sense. But I just I I don't. Anyway, I, I'm going to get in trouble. So it'd be interesting to know how many people who commented on that uh, about you not you giving the wrong advice actually did actually quarantine themselves. Yeah, that's true. Because sometimes it's easy to type a thing going, you should do this, but whether they actually do it is a different story, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. But pff, whatever. Um, it's, yeah, I, I just don't, I think it's not right for most people. And people always say, oh, there's no excuses. And it's like, and, and then people will be like, well, I don't really have the space. And someone will say, yes, you do have the space. It's like, well, literally there is space in my tank, in my house. Yeah. But I don't want a, a quarantine tank on my dining room table or on my shelf or on my windowsill. Yeah. or sat on the floor by the tank or above the sump you know it's like anyway we'll, we'll move on because I'll, I'll upset people talking about quarantine uh youtube <laughs> super sticker youtube is youtube sending me money wicked thank you why it was very kind of you and i did see an, there was another super there is another one yeah i think there might be it. gabriel richards gabe uh, getting a reefer 250 g2 Ooh. upgrading from an all-in-one tips I mean, it's a generic, it's a broad question. Yeah, it's a very, that's, that's what I was thinking. What what tips do you want? That's the problem. Yeah. I'll ask what, I mean, the, the, but basic um, basics for me is get a couple of, um, oh, oh God, I, that's such a broad question. What I would do. <laughs> Another three hours. <laughs> yeah. What I would do is I would get two lights like a X, Radeon XR15s or whatever, or, you know, AI Hydra 32s refactory s whatever doesn't really matter two kessels whatever have those two that's it that's all you need you don't need more than that especially at first uh, i'd have a skimmer i'd have some a simple return pump a jekyll return pump i'd have a couple of power heads mp40s if you can afford them but if not nero fives maybe or even jekods <laughs> they have you seen how much mp40s are now a million they're 400 quid aren't they they are yeah. oh they are good though but i know i know but that's like that's not a small it's amount not, anymore and not, like, yeah. not over a do you remember what they were before 330 i think oh, I'd, 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 it was a while ago that i got them i just couldn't remember and i was just like when i saw them the other day i was like things have gone up so much 
in, mm. in, in the hobby. Chips were my, everywhere. My first, first powerheads were like 60 pounds. Well, they, but then get a Jekyll powerhead. Because there's nothing wrong with it. Or something like that. It was like, it's not that, yeah. Can you hear the bird in the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power right here. I'm not sure why it's angry. It's angry at something. Huh? Yeah, it usually wants to kill me, that parrot. Yeah, they're very possessive. Uh, ah, parrot. this one, literally, it like, hunts me down. It hears my voice. That's probably why it's annoyed, because it can hear me. Yeah, well, tough luck, parrot. Get used to it. Yeah. Um, but, but so, with yeah, with, there's nothing wrong with a jackod. Get a couple of jackods. The, 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 the MP40s are brilliant, because you can whip out the, uh, the wet sides. You've got no cables in the tank. Yeah. Um, there's loads of really good things about them. But your, your coral isn't going to be any happier for having an MP40 than it would be if it had a jackod. It's for, that, it's for us rather than the corals. Exactly, completely. Uh, so, and what I would do then is, uh, uh, so that's if you want the tips, that's it. No more equipment. You don't need a refugium. Yeah. Certainly, absolutely, one hundred percent, not in the first six months. Yeah. You don't need an aquarium controller. I'd get a heating controller because they're good. That's it. That's all I'd get. And then just keep it simple and do water changes. Please do water changes, please. Yes. Me. Yes. <laughs> if, I'm doing four, if I'm doing war change on a 4,000 litre system, there is no excuse for anyone else to not do them. Yeah, yeah. But, um... <laughs> but yeah, so there you go. That, I mean, ask if you've got uh, more, uh, more specific uh, questions, ask. But that's, I would just try to keep it simple. Try, honestly, it's just, it's, it's so important to, to not get lost, bogged down in getting a load of equipment thinking you need a filter roller, especially from day one, for example, and thinking you need all this different filtration equipment, just keep it simple and test your tank. Yeah. Um, but that's all quite generic advice. Let me scroll down because I did think there was another super chat, but there is not. Right, let me go back up in that case. Uh, 1816 I was at, here we go. Uh, Q for cable management. Oh yes, cable management. Love it. Uh, can you uh, can you not use dosing tube organizer or are they too small to fit a mains cable? Uh, I don't. What's a, a dosing tube? Uh, I, uh, a dosing tube uh, organizer is just what I'm not sure how you'd get the cable in it though. You know, you get like I a it's, it's, yeah. thing that you put on the edge, and they, then you put your dosing tubes in it. Yeah, yeah. It's normally a circle. So how are you going to get a cable in it? I think you can get the ones that sit that sit in your cabinet as well that hide the dosing tube. They'll probably be too small, but you can get trunking. Trunking is probably the better thing. You can get all sorts. If you Google cable management at your local hardware store, man, the options are endless. So uh, that's I, I wouldn't bother with them um, with niche products like a uh, dosing. Oh, uh, Carl Glasgow's or Glasgow has a message at 648. It says, I buy quarantine fish, which really mean I pay extra for fish. They say it's quarantined, which is so true. Quarantine of fish as well, especially from a shop's perspective, is not a small... I'm not saying they don't do it, but it's not a small It's not a small thing to do. It's Yeah, oh, completely. And this is so... That is that is worth... That is money well spent, I think. And yeah. but it's funny. It, I like the, the, um, the perspective of I pay uh, more money for... They're yeah. telling me they've done it because it's not like you can see the difference in the fish. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and you got to trust them. But what does quarantine mean? Yes. Because you ask 10 shops, they'll give you 10 answers. Yeah. But if you're paying extra, I would like to think they've been isolated. Probably I'd want them to have been treated prophylactically or at least, uh, yeah, I think I'd want them to have been treated. And, I want, and I'd want them to have been in, because quarantine, quarantina means 40, 40 days. Yeah. So I'd, I'd want them to be put aside for that kind of length of time, maybe longer. That's the problem. That's a long time for a shop to be running a system with Absolutely. electricity yeah, yeah. and staff to maintain it. And you put the fish in there. Remember, some of those fish won't make it out of quarantine. To do it mm. of properly, like quarantine properly, it's just not cost effective for a shop as far as I'm, as I'm concerned. Yeah. There's a place in America. I can't remember what it's called. It's very expensive. It's an online shop, isn't it? I think. Yeah, and they they don't piss around. Yeah. <laughs> so like you can you can you can take that to the bank. So that the would be price, the price goes with it, doesn't it? Exactly. Uh, which is which is right. It should do because if you're paying an extra ten quid for a quarantine clownfish, yeah, it's not quarantined properly. So yeah, if yeah. you're paying a thousand pounds for clownfish, then yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, it's um. It's, it's, I don't know. You'd be pretty mad if you bought all your fish from that one place and then you put them in your tank and then there was a white spot outbreak. That's the problem. But you could get a white spot cyst on a frag plug. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's true. unlikely, but it's not impossible. But so yeah, but you're right, you would be pissed off. 
Um, Lincoln Towns. I have a bubble magus protein skimmer and it sucks. They do suck a little bit. <laughs> They're quite noisy. I'm adjust. I'm constantly adjusting to make it work. Will this red uh, sea self level a dummy proof it for me? Sorry, Ryan, talking about equipment again. Um, so first off, I don't know. I, I talked, I had to sit down and talk to the guy who designed it and I talked to Red Sea. So they told me everything about it, but I, I don't, I've not got my hands on it yet. I'll get one next year, but I don't know for sure. But it's not designed to plug it in <clears throat> and it will set itself up properly. You've still got to set the water level at the right height. You've got yeah. to set the pump at the right intensity, which, it, which you'll, the instructions will tell you what to do. But the difference is it won't, you shouldn't need to be constantly adjusting it. So like two weeks in, if it starts to overflow, it should level back off. Yeah. But I don't know. Red Sea say that. I don't know if that's true. And how many times have you seen, if they, you know, Red Sea are a good company, they make good kits. So it probably will be. But how many times have you seen a company make promises and then you buy it and it's like Tesla. I've got Tesla. It's got, yeah. it comes with, uh, what's it called? Uh, autopilot. Yeah. It's not, it's cruise control and it's shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not autopilot, but anyway, so so I've got no idea, but in theory, it should solve the problem you're trying to fix. Yes, I just need to check something one second because I want to make sure Virgin just go outside because okay. it's minus thirteen. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where. I'll carry over. Mrs. is a photographer, and I'll have to enlist her. Yeah, do you know what? So I did a stream with what's his name, um, Josh Sims. Josh Sims. Josh Silsbury. Uh, he is, he's not a professional photographer, but he's kind of a semi-professional photographer. So it's worth checking that out. He had some interesting stuff. Um, she's in the base. She, she's not, she's, she's not dead. Right. Cool. Okay. Cause that, that's bad. I don't know much about kids, but I know you're not supposed to. Not let him go outside at minus 13 in address. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, is it worth uh, using feed mode on return pumps and skimmer? Uh, um. I, <laughs> it, it, de it depends the, the answer to every literally every question in the hobby more or less is it depends yeah. you don't like feed mode i'll tell you why i do i just my... i've never I don't, I don't ever use it the fish eat the food too quickly for it to be beneficial for, from my perspective i don't use it for um for feeding yeah but i do use it uh for if i like want to take photos or if i want to put a coral in and you don't want the water to be disturbed yeah. i use it then because it will come back on 10 minutes later but there are plenty of people who you put fish in, you put food in the tank and it goes straight down the weir box and if that's you yeah. use feed mode yeah. and don't let anyone tell you oh you shouldn't use it uh. yeah it's one it's one of those things that i remember going okay, thinking oh yeah i'm going to use this every day and then you know how I made fun of you yeah, yeah. Ago about pressing four buttons. I can't bother to press one button. <laughs> exactly. But the, but ultimately, I like that. So the other thing, in, like if I, in my tank, I've got four MP40s and uh, two return pumps that are quite powerful. So yeah. it, it blows everywhere. It never goes down the weir box. It blows everywhere. Yeah. And that means that it's spread out so the fish can go. And I like that. But I have had on my, on my water box, there have been times when it goes straight down the weir box. So I'm like, feed mode. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to make the fish work for their food in my tank. Well, that's, you should. So you should. When I'm talking about feed mode, I think this is what he's asking. I'm using feed mode on the return pump, yeah. the power heads. If you turn all the power heads off and it just goes, mm, that's just sinks down. Not, if your fish aren't strong enough to swim after food and catch it, they're not going to survive. So you shouldn't need to do that to uh, to to give them the chance to eat it uh john williams hey i'm trying to lower ph in my freshwater tank you are in the wrong place i've yes. got literally no idea about freshwater no idea <laughs> uh yeah so god knows uh i'm afraid you'll need to ask a freshwater aquarist i'm sorry when i said lower ph i was like what no one wants I, know, I was thinking that what do you mean <laughs> um tmrv style at reef dog uh why can't you put a float uh, in a barrel uh because it, it won't fit the barrels i've got it won't fit but i i do have a little um infrared sensor which does the exact same thing so uh do that and i need to be able to move the barrel around anyway whatever uh 10 percent off his corals that's that guy in italy yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and we've just talked about return pumps uh so on feed mode what kind of sump do you have and how much did it cost i have a sump that came with the tank with the red sea tank and yeah. it cost whatever Red Sea charged as part of the bundle. So I didn't have, I don't, you might be talking to someone else actually. No, again, I think I, because I saw that a little while ago. I think that in America, it's, you can, you buy fully made sumps, whereas it's yeah. not, it's not really a big thing in the UK. 
you can the Charterhouse have uh, a range of sumps, and there are loads you can get. I, I whenever I see um, a, a custom of custom, like it's still off the shelf, a, an off the shelf sump that replaces your main one. Yeah, I always look at them and I'm, and I'm like, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. So if I was to design one and get a, a manufacturer tank builder to make one, yeah. great. But I wouldn't buy one off the shelf. No, it's made by a fancy no. company because they're like they'll have they'll just do things wrong. And I'm like, why did you put the dosing lines there? I don't want them there. And <laughs> why is that baffle in that place? And why is the skimmer chamber so small? Why don't you know? <laughs> but so I'd I'd, I'd um, you'd, custom... you you could have a custom one built for you. Yeah, you're smirking, Ryan. What have you no, said? I just said, are you in America? I am in America. You, that Mark obviously missed the uh, the start of it. But I'm wonder, I'm intrigued as to why he know he's realised I'm in America. <laughs> because uh, he, maybe he saw your I, Instagram photo. It might have been because I went down. I said I'm going to the basement, so <laughs> that's an American thing. My serenity says it's 45. That's the right spot for the apex on my tank. I don't really know what that means. But I, think he's saying, I think he's saying that the, the apex is wrong. Anyway, I have a full on apex system, including two tridents. I'm very happy over with, the, with the overall experience. I'm not saying that the tri that apex are bad, by the way. I've got nothing against um, Neptune. I think there are loads of people who love them. I'll point uh, out the so, do you need one as a new reefer? Do you need, if you're oh, going to no. and you're going to have to spend a thousand pounds or whatever it is, do you need one? And the answer is no, you don't need one. No, absolutely. And if instead of spending money on all fancy equipment, just buy standard equipment, as long as it's not cheapo crap off um, off Amazon or whatever. Yeah. Standard equipment and spend the money on livestock. Yeah. Quarantine livestock. <laughs> Quarantine livestock uh, from UK uh, online coral sellers uh, at prestigereef.co.uk. <laughs> I need to get a little feature so it like goes bing and makes your teeth. I, I need you. You need to have a little banner at the top that has just keeps going. My website going round and round in a circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if your return pump dies and you have a temp controller alert on your phone, would you be alerted of a temp drop eventually as a tank? Um, it depends where maybe, you're no, because that's the thing. Because if the, if it's if it's in the sump, yeah, then that's where your heater is. So it's going to be it's going to be on. But if it was if you had a temperature probe in your tank, yes, which would potentially be messy. But if you had it in the weir box, then yes, because eventually the temperature would drop. But that's. That's an inelegant way of achieving that um, that aim. And oh, I do. But yeah, it would do that. It would do that if, you, if as long as you didn't have the, the probe, the temp probe in your sump. Um, what did the killer whale say to the <laughs> whale shark? Where's the where's the punchline? Can't we just put that out there. God's sake, Jason. Um, I don't know. What did the killer whale say to the whale shark? We'll find out. Oh yeah. Because people have realized that it's light where I am. They can see the sun shining through the window. Oh, I see. And yeah, like, it's not, it must be dark there. Good. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. How is the 52-liter Nano Shell Smock 2? Uh, it's all right. I've got like this weird smattering of... It looks a little bit dinoflagellate if I'm completely honest. Um, but it's uh, I've got the smattering of algae. But it's doing fine. It's just it's early days, and I'm not, I'm not in any rush. It's only been up for five months. So I'm just going to chill. I'm not going to go too crazy, but it's fine. It's all right. I'll um, I'll do an update at some point. Six month update, maybe. Uh... I'm going to move you forward if you're going through them systematically. But Julie's actually right. asked a really interesting question. The last question has come in, but I don't I don't want to throw you off. Judy, if an all SPS tank with no fish, with no fish, are nutrients import? What? I think there's, I think they're they're basically saying, can you run an an all SPS tank with no fish? Oh, right. If, if an all SPS tank with no fish, are nutrients important as SPS grow mainly with lights? N nutrients are 100% important. Yes. And it, like people often say, what's the most important thing, lighting or flow? And yeah. the answer is, if you've got amazing lighting and you've nailed it, but your flow shit, <laughs> then it's like making a cake without eggs. It's going to taste yeah. horrible if you've got the best flour in the world. So you need to get... You get eggs, cakes are awful. <laughs> oh, exa exactly, yeah. So you need to get everything right. But nutrients are absolutely 100% important and you, they must have the right level. And I never understood why people don't want, why people want to have a tank with no fish. I just don't no, get it. And this, this, it's like they Sorry, <laughs> could a tank so much. Why would you not want to have fish in a tank? That's like you'd have to because they're, they're so useful as well some fish so why would you but anyway look it, it makes it more difficult especially keeping sps without fish that is difficult so 
I have always been interested to see if you, I know it's in theory it's possible, what it would be like and how difficult it would be to run a tank by dosing nitrate and phosphate and having no fish in there and not feeding the corals and having the light and just wondering, is it, what, would that be complete enough to give them what they need or is it, will there be something missing that you're not dosing that the fish yeah. is doing with waste? Well, because is there something in food that and, yeah. and the way it, the fish process it or whatever? Like yeah, just... yeah. I think it would be it would be interesting to see if it's, if it can be done. Maybe Some it's the perfect way to do it. it. <laughs> Maybe it's the perfect way to do it. Yeah, well, I, that's why I wonder because think if if it's if it's uh, if the levels are kept the same way you keep alkalinity and everything, everything will be extremely consistent. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't like the idea of it, and I, no one. No one's done it, and there's probably a good reason. Your YouTube video was absolutely correct. All of my videos were absolutely correct because <laughs> I am the LeBron of of reefing. No one's commented on the LeBron name. Why not? No one has. <laughs> anyway. I just questioned it. All right, my uh, your video is absolutely correct. I had tried QT when I was new to Nobin and got it wrong. It's not that I'm not saying it's correct. Actually, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying that's my opinion, and it's a fair opinion. It is with that opinion is in is within a reasonable range of opinions, is what I'm saying. Uh, Banzai 29A is dosing all for reef, but can't keep his calcium and mag where they should be. What can I do? Well, all for reef doses everything. You can't, you know, adjust the calcium and magnesium. So if that's a problem, I'd wonder how many corals you got in your tank. To be honest, do you, have you tried do dosing all for reef? Yeah. Do you use it on your tanks now? I don't use it on any of my tanks, but I think a lot of people think that you can you if you use all for reef, it just that's just it. You don't need to worry about anything else. Everything will consume all the elements at exactly the equal rates. It doesn't work like that. I've never used it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't work like that. And I think yeah. in the instructions it does say you could use all for reef, but you need to <laughs> you'll need to make adjustments occasionally for the other elements. I'm pretty sure it says something along those lines, which means yeah, that would it's one doping solution. But I mean, I use a two-part dosing solution and I never have to adjust calcium, for example, or magnesium. Well, I don't keep as close an eye on them. But but the answer really is if you if if, if um, you adjust the, the, the rate and so lower it and then get a, cal a, a calcium and a magnesium supplement and add them in the levels you need to. Or if it's becoming too much of a faff, ditch it and go for something like Red Sea that does them all, all three separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think you can. It's just, it's like, if your calcium and magnesium aren't right, well, there's, you can't control them individually. It's far, I do, I've only used I used it for like six months, um, so I'm not I'm no expert on that at all. I don't personally. I have never used it. I just don't really like the idea of it. But that might there might be that might just be me. I just know that I use elements at completely different rates, and yeah. so uh, at some point in time, you're it, they'll become unbalanced. And I don't think yeah. people, especially new people in the hobby, realize that this is happening. So it's it's one of those things where people assume they're doing the right thing, but they're not testing properly. And then and then after six months, they've got really, really high calcium or really, really low alkalinity and can't work out why, because they've been dosing what they think they should be dosing. Yeah, it's easy to make assumptions, isn't it? Yes, that's the problem with it. Yeah, okay. Um, catching tangs. Lee Armstrong has got a small system trying to catch a tang. Is there any way of catching it without removing loads of escape? Uh, yes, I just use some sort of fish trap. Yep. So, they, I, I find they go in really easily because like, they're, they're curious and they think there might be algae on it. <laughs> tang, tangs are. Uh, are if, it, if it was like a dwarf angel fish, you've got a, uh, a bit more difficult time. But I would put a trap in, feed the, put the food in the trap. Don't try and catch them on the first day or the second day. And then on the third, just keep feeding them in the trap. And then on the third day, they'll just go in. And then you have to, there's no stress involved. You're not sitting there waiting, going, why is it not going in? You have to let them get used to it. Yeah. So there you go, patience, which is always the answer, annoyingly. Monkey news, Mo monkey news. <laughs> How can you set up the filter in the back? I've been in freshwater for a long time. Uh, I even have a tank in my backyard, but I'm planning a 20 gallon for clownfish the filter do you mean like an all-in-one filter i mean what filter is it i don't know uh, on this on this tank it's an all-in-one tank i just have a sponge that I, I throw away she's doing that on purpose she she is i think she i think Vera's is desperate to be on the camera i think yeah okay. just casually keeps walking past and is glancing up 
just having well, a little, I, little am look. I on am I on YouTube? Oh whoops, sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? You're famous when you're on here, Vera. Um now she's gone shy. So gone shy. Uh, I use all Jacob, 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 I presume. Uh, uh, returns and wave mine, uh, makers never had a problem with the running for two years. I've just had a, um, a return pump. I find the return pumps uh, are generally very reliable, but I've just had one that I use as a salt mixing return pump, and that's packed up after a couple of years. Yeah. It's the first one that's happened to me. Uh, but anyway. I've only had do... one return pump fail in 14 years. There so. you go. So, and I, so I've won two for redundancy on both of my tanks, but it's probably yeah. overkill. Someone was asking about it the other day. It might be Tom, Tom actually. It's probably overkill. Yeah. But it's like, well. Um, jellyfish, they're fake. They're plastic. So I don't do squat, <laughs> basically. <laughs> fake jellies. Uh, Patrick says, any expe experience with cryptic refugium? No. Do you know what that is? I, I didn't know what that was until I saw a reef bum video recently basically a no light area where you grow stuff but no 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 experience it must Sorry? be must be non photosynthetic stuff then if you're growing it correct like sponges no. never heard no of experience hi guys i'm taking the jump from fresh to marine ah, any of you used atm colony yes uh, it's not but enough people use it to it must work it is yeah it does, but be careful and test ammonia. Uh, gentlemen, could it be safe to say that a year in a year's time, a year's time is what it takes to see a proper tank maturation? It varies, I think, is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> it varies it var on, on there's so many things because is your tank mature if it's covered in carline algae? Is that a mature tank? Is it mature if it can keep SPS? Because I grew SPS on day one. Like, so do you see what I mean? What is classified as a mature tank? Is it the amount of microfauna you have? It's there are various things for me. So you can keep um, uh, corals without them dying for no apparent reason or getting covered in brown yeah. algae or whatever. You don't have issues pop up like cyanobacteria randomly or dinos that keep coming and going. That can happen from time to time. But uh, but basically, when it's stable and that sort of stuff doesn't happen, so I mean, a year is always the the time that people quote, isn't it? And it's probably about right, but it varies. Yeah, it varies. So uh, this this what this tank is five months old, and that's I wouldn't consider that mature at all. What is interesting is you definitely do see a noticeable difference where things start to get much better. It could be nine months, it could be like a year and a half, but there is usually a like a peak in your tank, and all of a sudden you look at it and you go something has changed and it's just better than it was yeah about, and that's when you know that you've reached that maturation time about five years on my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh anyway uh jason larawan do you guys integrate uh, google assistant or alexa no i do not and no. i would not touch it alexa is shush i knew she'd say something i hate alexa sorry you know having your usual beer delivered no, I know. That's a good point. Actually, she's good for getting beers delivered, turning off and on lights, timers, and the radio. But yeah. I don't like sometimes Alexa and Google just do random stuff. And I don't want to actually like, say, Alexa, turn the kitchen lights off. And she's like, okay, I'm going to turn your return pump off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's so true. So, <laughs> I just, it's, it's, it's cool. I did actually, I set up a tank about seven years ago, six years ago. And I tried, I had a, a smart plug with an Alexa thing on it. But I just what's the point it's just yeah. there's just no point it's there's, no. It's, it's not there's no point it's just not worth the risk even if the risk is small just zero i just know <laughs> almost rust four or five inches mm, probably or are there larger species yes oh, massive rust like huge ones but i mean like we're talking hobby grade oh rust. well no you, board rust. you look there's plenty of rust that get bigger than than they are usually the non-reef safe ones, though. Checkerboard rats uh, are reef safe. They get quite big. Yeah. Femin femininus. Femina is it femininus? You might be right. Feminus, femininus, and that. They get quite big. What's the other one that's quite expensive? What's that really cool one that you love? Melanaris rats. Uh, yeah, they get quite big. To be fair, but there's, there's another one that's expensive. It's not a feminist rats. There's oh. Uh, is it is it the blue one and yellow? Yeah, blue and yellow. I know what you're talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. One of you does. Tell me. What am I yeah. thinking of? Blue and expensive blue and yellow. They're like a thousand quid. It, it will like, yeah. it will annoy me now. Tell me what it is. 
No, there are there are some, yeah, for sure. There are some that do get big. Uh, Harlequin Tusk is technically a wrestler. Lenardi, yes, that's yeah, it. Yeah, I knew it was with L, but yeah. I it was. A Harlequin Tusk is technically a wrestler, and they get quite big, but it's not a proper wrestler, proper ras in the in the sense of what we think of as a wrestler. Um, ah, oh, what else are we gonna do? Well, okay, well I'm, I'm catching up with uh, with uh, the feed mode chat. Uh, I want to. There was a question that I. Where was it? Welcome to America. Also, LeBron. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can see where you are now. Um, that was just, a, I just, I called myself the LeBron of reefing the other week. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought it'd be fun. Delusional, delusional is, is what I was realizing. Well. Ryan, uh oh, we've got a sales question. On your site, looking at a pink Safastria, where is the best placement in tank? Uh, low down. In it almost it has it prefers very low light and low flow is what I find with with the um, decay of the factories. So, there you go. but you can't buy it because Ryan's uh, um, not at the moment. You can buy it if you want, but you just won't get it yet. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you uh, can't Errol's... ship anyway until sort of it, it gets a bit safer to ship in, in January. So yeah, that's true. It's a bit cold. Yeah. Errol Sullivan, uh, any thoughts about repainting a room? Ah, oh, I've thought about that a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Water-based paints, maybe they're okay. I'd be I'd be paranoid as hell about that. But I have I had a room painted with the tank still in it, and there was no issue. I covered. I had the paint the tank covered. I'm not saying I don't know what paint was used. I don't know anything yeah. else. But what I do know is that it was it was fine, and I did cover. I completely covered the tank. <laughs> Just pretend it's not happening, Ryan. Yeah. Um, I, I don't care anyway. <laughs> here's the punchline. Orca said you're an imposter. This is the longest punchline. I don't remember what the start of the joke was anymore. Well, actually, maybe it's not the punchline because an orca is a killer whale, isn't it? Not a... Oh, no, no, that was it. Yeah. What's the difference between a killer whale and a killer shark? No. And a... I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, we'll yeah. assume it was funny. Uh, Alex, can you ask Ryan why I can't keep Xenia? Ryan, why can't John Mike keep Xenia? Oh, extremely lucky. That is why you can't keep Xenia because you don't want it. <laughs> Xenia is one of the worst cows you can get, as far as I'm concerned. Xenia is funny, though, isn't it? Because for the most part, it's dead easy and it grows like crazy. But some people, whether they've got high nutrients, low nutrients, whatever, it's yeah. just like, no, not doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's either you can grow it like wildfire or you can't grow it at all, is, uh, is what people experience with Xenia. Mm. Uh, I'm wondering if someone will, uh, will chime in on their experience with Xenia, but she's uh, it's obviously not listening. Uh, whoa, whoa, what's this? Is it Sunday? Go get mummy. <laughs> Go get mummy. Uh, is it Sunday? It is not Sunday. Oh, Les, yeah, Les. Yeah. I've seen <laughs> Les. Les. Les feels like it's not it is the party. It, it is not Sunday, but Sunday is Christmas, and I fancied a live stream today, so I was like, why not? Uh, a mature tank is 35 years and above. Yeah, I would agree with that. A 35 year old tank is mature. This is true. Is he coming? Where, where's mummy? Yes. Oh, exciting. Hey. Who's mummy? We're about to yeah. find out. Drum roll. Who is yeah. he? It's been a while. I reckon. You say yes. Oh, she said she's not coming. Oh, she's, she's shy. It's been, it's been a while. Very good. Um, you were asking about your your tank about a year. A year is probably uh, you know if it's stable on pods and critters thriving. Yeah, I guess that's right. Uh, Coral beauty is it worth a risk? Ryan, our local uh, uh, re, uh, angelfish expert, what's the answer? Uh, coral beauties are like I had a coral beauty. It was the worst fish ever to catch out of my tank ever. I've had all sorts of <laughs> dwarf angels, but the coral beauty took me weeks to catch. They're very like secretive and they stay near the rock work. Um, but look, if you're going to have a, a reef, if you would like to have a dwarf angel, coral beauties or flame angels are the best chances of success in a reef tank. So I, like, I, I did it. Why don't you give it a go? Is what is my opinion. Uh, my, yeah, my view on that is so I've never had a coral beauty, but supposedly they're one of the more reef safe ones. But I, th it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's worth a punt. And it, I've, I've bought plenty of fish where I thought it's worth a punt. And it hasn't worked out. Yes, that's the problem. Uh, but, so you've got to be prepared. So don't say, oh, Alex said it was okay. Oh, and he demolished all my 100 quid acans. Yeah. But it is worth a punt. As long as you're comfortable with the risks, uh, then it's worth a punt as far as I'm concerned. You Especially can, if you really like the fish. 
you can have all sorts of things in your tank as long as, as long as you're willing to take the risk. And at some point in time, when you take these risks, it will not pay off. And as long as you're willing to accept the ris- the, the responsibility and the hassle when it doesn't pay off, I say go for it. But if you're like, actually, I quite like my tank. It's easy. I don't have to do very much. I don't have to take all the rocks down to catch it. Then it's not for you. <laughs> clownfish are a risk. Uh, clownfish are... Well, no, they're... Aggression risk. They're easy to catch clownfish generally. They don't yeah, you can put your hand in speed. Speed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, but, but the point I'm making is there's loads of fish are a risk. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Um what was I gonna say? So someone was asking about Maidenhead and we might be uh, besmirching the good name. Went to my local Maidenhead looking at their corals. I can see it's just teeming with Aptasia, not uncommon. Should I even risk buying from them? I know I will get it eventually, but what do you think? I would not buy a coral if I could see Aptasia on it. But I mean, so go somewhere else. <laughs> right, I will say, is it actually on the coral you that you're looking at? Because that's what I'm assuming. Yes, because if Ooh. all basically all shops will have some sort of pests at all times. It's virtually impossible. If you're getting boxes and boxes of corals in every single week, is it's it's not realistic to expect that of your shop. Now, if you so if you see one Aptasia, would that put you off buying a coral in a different in a different area of the shop? No, it's... no, my, no. my favourite shops. I'm pretty sure I see Aptasia in them from time to time. All of them. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I was there. I, I know which one you're talking about, and I and I remember seeing it there. And then it's just you know, they go, yeah, every so often we just put a cough band in, clears them out, and then you start again, put a new coral in, and they come back. So it's just it's one of those things that when you own a shop, it's all to quarantine corals properly. Apparently, it takes six months. So if you imagine the cost of, of, if you thought quarantine fish was expensive, imagine how much quarantine corals would be. But I think the point here is that the, the, the tanks are teeming with Aptasia. Oh, yes. yeah. And that, that's a difference. So if, if the tank is coming, because there's a difference between the really good shops that really take care of things and yeah, yeah. they still get Aptasia, but that's fine. Yeah. And, and a shop that is it, covered in Aptasia, the corals don't look healthy and it's like, mm, they're not taking that great care. So I've, I wouldn't say I do, that I wouldn't buy from a tank that's covered in Aptasia. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't, Aptasia is not really that bad. It's not on it. It's in the tank. <clears throat> yeah, it might. It's, the, the, it's about risk, gratitude to risk. So it's not on it. That doesn't mean that it's not on it. <laughs> it might mean that it's just so tiny you can't see it. So yes. you might buy the coral and, and get an Aptasia. It's a higher risk of that. Then if it's oh. a clean tank. Oh, now we got now we got all oh, those mum in the background. Yeah, Someone said she didn't want to be on camera. Hello, well, mummy. That's very I like to be on camera, don't you? You've been walking around all day. Reach your mummy come. You have to bring mummy over. I would say I could easily see a handful of them. I, I would only be bothered if it was covered in, if the place was covered in them. And here is the celebrity guest. Hello, Hi. Mindy. It has been a long time, probably, since people see Mindy. Yes. Very long time. Yeah. I know. But oh, yeah. people want to see your biceps. Oh no! Yeah, people want to see your biceps. I haven't worked out my arms in forever. <laughs> so well, guess guess that's a no. There's, it's obviously a short cameo. I mean, there we go, a brief cameo. Bigger than yours, they are bigger than mine. Yeah. Can we? If we can't see Mindy's biceps, can we see yours? So can you see mine? No, no, you can't see mine. Just, We're talking about Zinia. You love Zinia, don't you? My 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 right arm's point there. there yeah. We go, yes. yes. Then we shouldn't be able to resist. <laughs> Ryan, where's yours? No, they're not non existent, especially after that. Puts me to shame. So, the people want to see them. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. Uh, a pod of dolphins swam into two sperm whales. Dolphin asked what happened. Low sperm count. Sperm whale squirmed away. These are rubbish. I are uh, no. Sorry, James. <laughs> I love I love your uh, your whale fish uh, bands, but those are terrible jokes. No. I don't, I, I don't I'm, sure, I'm not sure they are jokes. Nipples or biceps, Ryan? For God's sake! <laughs> what no? Are you asking mine on that for me or for Mindy? <laughs> well, just be careful. I'll get demonetized. Um, all right. Well, look, we have got. Oh, actually, you know, well, I was going to say we've got to the end of the chat, so we might wrap it up soon. Yeah. Uh, oh, this couple of things. Sunny Gould. Hello, Sunny. Uh, he thinks captive bred angels are less reef safe. It's interesting. Why would that be? I don't think they're necessarily any more reef safe. The theory is that pe- people say captive bred uh, angels are more reef safe because they've never seen a, a, a coral. Yeah. Because they grow up in a, a, a sterile tank. 
But if you bought a uh, a lion cub, yeah, uh, grew it in a little in your house where it never saw anything, yeah. and then you put it on the plains of the Serengeti in a gazelle van path, I bet it would attack the gazelle. Uh, maybe. So that's the so for me, I don't necessarily think they're. Uh, they're they're likely to be more more reef safe, but I'd be surprised if they're less reef safe. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I think it it might... probably, yeah, I, I agree with you. It probably would be neither it, it, no better or worse. But it's interesting why they're saying that they're, they're worse. I'd be interested to know, Danny. Let us know. Uh, indeed. So uh, yeah, that's my theory. No, it's not. You just <laughs> said the opposite, didn't you? I missed something. <laughs> <laughs> unless unless he's talking about something. anyway uh so what i was going to say is i might start wrapping up soon because we're coming to the end of the chat so if you've got any questions you're desperate to ask chuck them down there um and we'll we'll potentially wrap up soon big bash ash oh is that a cricket reference in crossing monty is taking over chip it off and risk ruining the scape or frag over it chip it off take the scape out if you can do and, and and chip it off that's what i did recently it was pain in the ass but it was worth doing although i didn't get all of it and it's growing back um, so yeah, it's a tough one. Oh, multi bar, they're cool. Uh, and I had a multi bar that went to town, and Reef Bum had his regal go to town. Yeah, I'll be gutted if my regal goes to town on my curls. Uh, has Mindy still got a tank? I think I can see a tank over your shoulder. Mindy does have a tank behind. Oh, can we see it? No, there's nothing in it, it's empty. Oh, okay. <laughs> so What's we are plan? catching that tank back up. Um, probably, mate, well, in the next week or so. So um, currently, she's got it's eight foot, isn't it? That tank. I'm pretty sure it's eight foot. That tank is massive. Pretty so impressive. We've got. Seven. I mean, is so it seven? What do they make the tanks in? Even numbers or odd numbers? Usually even. No, no, they make them in all good numbers. I think. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's seven. Eight that tank. Seven would be a weird size, but either way, whatever, it's big. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I have specially made. Yeah. So it's an odd size. So what? Yeah. Oh. To fit the wall. Yeah. I think it's seven feet. It's a big ass tank. It's big enough to lie down in. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Okay. It's not taller than it. It's yeah. Big. Uh, reef with me. The more water changes, the better. Or at some point, it becomes a waste. Measuring it for you. Eighty-four inches. Eighty-four inches is what it is. Seven feet, I believe. Seven feet. Eighty-four inches in feet. I'm sure that's right. <laughs> Twenty seven feet. Yeah. There you go, seven foot. Then I was wrong. It's a big ass tank. It is a um, big. The warm, 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 more water changes the better. Or yeah, I mean, there's no. I wouldn't say that more water changes the better. Uh, it probably doesn't do too much harm doing too many rather than too few. But if you're doing a hundred percent water changes every day, that's bad. <laughs> it does. I think that at, at, at some point it does become a waste of money over up. Like the, it's it has it's a diminishing returns. If, so if you did forty to forty percent every single day for a week, all of a sudden you've got brand new water in theory. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Well, not quite. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, ninety nine percent. But um, at first is a fifty percent change if you think about it, and then the next day, then it'll be you'll get twenty five percent, and then it, yeah, it has diminishing exactly. returns. Yeah, yeah. So, but there's there's probably a tipping point. I don't know what it is, but I wouldn't overthink it to be honest. Probably fifty percent. <laughs> maybe yeah but i mean as it's so like 10 percent a week is the standard it, it works it's it's not based on science it's based on 10 percent sounds good yeah <laughs> and it's easy and it's cheap but um but it works so i'll I stick with that but there probably is a point when it becomes a waste of money but i don't know what that point is i wouldn't i don't know 10 percent is fine 30 percent maximum maybe i don't think i'd want to go more than that because you, you're introducing more instability then that defeats the object yeah, especially if you've if you've got not got a problem. If you've got problems and you've got a load of metal in your tank, fine. But um, Ethan Ferret is adding an XR15 and taking off the AI Prime. However, could I add an Alvia Pora under the AI and would it have enough light? Yes, you would have enough light. Well, I mean, depends how big the tank is. Blah blah blah. But yeah, yeah, you would be fine. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't need a lot of light. An Alvi. Although actually, it's saying that I've never kept one, <laughs> but it's an LPS is what I'm basing on. Yeah. Um, she might not have a tank, but she definitely has some guns. You hear that? She she is listening in the background. Oh, you can see her. She's just <laughs> she's rolling her eyes. How are you today? Um, I don't know. Uh, I have not She's not been on the camera a long time, so she feels she's shy. She's shy. Yes. 
Uh, I think the point is for SPS when you spend more on salt and frags. I mean, why would you want to do massive water changes all the time? What are you trying to achieve? Yeah. You're just if you if you were doing fifty percent a week, that's crazy. If you ask me, even thirty percent a week is is a lot. Yeah. If you've got like a tank like this, though, I'm I will be doing probably thirty percent a week, and that's because there's no filtration on it apart from a sponge. Yeah. <laughs> and it's got forgiving corals, but anyway. Um, We've run out of, uh, of of questions, Ryan, and I'm thinking we could probably wrap it up. What do you reckon? Yeah. Anything else you wanted to talk about? No, no. I'm, um, as you know, I'm jet lagged, so I'm tired again. Yeah. All right. Well, so, in that case, we'll do uh, the top form for what was that? What was my homework for next week? Oh, uh, reefing New Year's resolutions for reefing. Re reefing New resolutions. Year's resolutions. But there you go. we will do one last question, actually. Yeah. Uh, Smooth Steve says best way to get nitrates and phosphates up. In a 150 gallon reef tank that is fallow due to ick chemical dosing or feed it food chemical dosing you think yeah uh, definitely yeah, yeah. Yeah. otherwise you're gonna have a load of food just rotting away not eating it's not it's not the same as like the fish digesting it i would i would definitely be chemically dosing i think nios i can't remember who who do yeah nios uh, plus yeah i've got nitrate yeah. plus i've got one for phosphate one for nitrate and that's definitely what i would be doing there it's we go. A much smooth cleaner approach. Sorry, it's just a much cleaner approach to do it that way. Makes sense to me. All right. Well, everybody is saying thank you, happy holidays, happy Christmas, all that sort of stuff. Oh, and we got a lurker. I'm always a lurker. Oh, wicked, my lurkers. <laughs> uh, but, but you guys rule. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Right. So we'll wrap it up. Thank you for coming along, Ryan. Thanks for giving up your time uh, when you probably got better things to be doing. And I will see you again soon. See you all, all right. guys. Yeah. See you later. Bye.